Hey everybody, welcome to our broadcast tonight. So as you can see on the screen right now with me, uh, we're talking about unsolicited sales calls. And I, I bring this up because invariably when you're in the coaching program, you will get calls from other companies that are not our office offering you different goods and services. Some of them are great and others are uh, are, are terrible. They're, they're garbage. They're not worth your time or your money at all. And so I want to address the questions that I get from, from my clients. First of all, why do these calls come in? Because usually the comment is, well, hey, I invested into the coaching program. I was told I've got everything I need. Why am I getting these other calls? And then of the calls that I am getting, who should I be talking to and, and who's not worth my time? So I'm not going to make a list of companies tonight. We'd be here all night listing company names. We're not going to do that. I'm just going to give you some general general principles and help you understand kind of why that happens while you're while you're with us in the program. Okay. So first things first, you know, when when most of you guys started with us, um, you started off by, and I'm just going to, this is going to represent. Well, let's see. I don't want I don't want to draw a circle. Hold on. I want to draw a square here. So most of you guys found us through a company, through maybe an email, or you saw an ad online of some sort. This is gonna this is gonna represent a web page here. Okay. Some some company or another, and you probably spent to get here, I don't know. 50 to a hundred dollars maybe I'm drawing with a mouse by the way so don't judge too harshly does that sound does that sound about right to most of you guys like think about it not not before not when you signed up for a coaching program because the coaching program was of course more expensive than 50 to a hundred dollars it was before that you signed up with some sort of maybe it had to do with link posting or or, you know, creating banner ads or, you know, working from home or, right? Something like that. Most of you guys are saying yes, that, that sounds about right. So you, you would have found one of these companies. I, and not, ever, this this isn't for all of our clients. This is just for, for some of you. But the majority of you found some sort of program like this and you signed up, right? And then what happened shortly after that, you would have then gotten a call from us. So just, I'm going to represent us over here just with an arrow, you know, and we'll say, you know, this, this is us over here. I'm going to label this as, um, coaching. We're, so the, the first question is, is, are we, are we affiliated? Like, is this original company, the same company? as us. We're talking about this company right here. Are they the same company as, you know, the coaching company? Um, and the answer is no. So, so not at all. We're, we're totally separate companies. Do they have some kind of relation with us? Yeah, because, because we get your name from these guys originally. So were you, when you were called and sold coaching, we, we got your name from somewhere and that's where it came from. Well, we don't, we don't work with everybody. Right? Not everybody can A, afford the coaching program, and B, not everybody has the time or the energy, the gumption to actually do it. Right? Not everybody's made out to be an entrepreneur, an, an ambitious person that wants to make money, right? That's, that's the truth. So that's, that's, how we, that's how we came to be, right? That's, that's why we have this relationship, and that's why you're in this webinar right now. You're later assigned a coach, right? And and you're in the coaching program moving forward for whatever it is, six months to a year or more, okay? But then what happens is shortly after that, you start getting a few calls from other companies. Is that accurate, right? Most of you guys say yes. You start getting calls from other companies. That's not necessarily because we're giving your information out to other companies, right? And that, and that I want to make clear because I, I sometimes get concerns like, Trevor, why, why are you giving my information out to everybody? And it's like, well, wait a minute, I'm not. A lot of times 
your information is being given out because you first gave it here in the first place, right? You gave it to this original and then and then a lot of times it's it's filtering out and and, and being given to other companies. The problem is when you when you sign up for coaching, this isn't really a great analogy, but I'm going to use it anyway. It's a little like you purchased a car. Um, or maybe even a home is a better example. You bought a home and and the home has everything you need. It's got it's got the four bedrooms you need for your kids. It's got the master it's got the master bedroom with the big walk-in closet and it's got the the nice deck and the big yard. It's got everything you need. But if, if you've ever bought a home before, you know there's like a million different upgrades, right? You can you can get the crown molding or you can get the upgraded flooring or or whatever the case is. And I feel like a little bit of that is 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 relatable to what happens in coaching. You get everything you need to make money online. You've got a coach, you've got the tools. You literally don't need to buy anything else to make money on the internet apart from you know maybe you need to get a domain name or eventually or pay for some hosting to run the site. But you don't need anything else necessarily, but there are those upgrades available. What what are some examples of those upgrades, guys? I mean you you guys you guys, you guys know that, right? Some of you guys who have been in the program for a while. What are some of these home upgrades we're talking about? Yeah. So, like, let's let's make a list here. How about LLC? Or tax, tax companies, LLC companies, corporate credit, maybe. Right, I'm seeing your list right now. Sorry, my my mouse is just not the best writing tool, but we're trying here. What else? How about suppliers? Finding suppliers. Or uh, web design, right? We have a we have a web design company or branch of our company right here in my office. Wow, that looks bad. There we go. Or uh, you know different types of marketing, right? You're with me on this. Yeah, business licensing, more one-on-one -on -one training, warranty. Yeah, I mean, we could make a big list of stuff. This is some of the main stuff right here. The question I always get is, well, well, do I have to do I have to buy these extras, right? Do I do I need these? And and of course the answer is 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 no. I mean, you don't need extras to make money online. That wouldn't have been honest of us from the very get-go. I mean, if you were initially told by our enrollment division that, hey, this this is all you need, but then it wasn't all you needed and you had to get these other things, well, that wouldn't have been honest or fair to you, right? So I want to make it clear, very first of all, when you buy into coaching, you really have bought what you need because you've got, you've got our coaching program to help you make money online. We can teach you all of this stuff, essentially. But is it nice to get the extra stuff? Of course it is. It, do do I need the upgraded wood flooring in my house, or would it would it be sufficient for me to have, you know, standard medium grade carpet? But well, sure, that'd be sufficient. But I'd like the I'd like the wood floor if I can get it. And I, I guess I, it's not a perfect analogy, right? It's not a perfect comparison, but I think it's good enough. You guys got to get that because we can all relate to, you know, to getting upgrades in a house. Or buying a car, or whatever, right? There's just upgrades, and and these these are some of them. So the question I get, and this this goes to kind of your comment made just a second ago, um, Russell. There are some companies that are directly affiliated with us, and there are some companies that will call you that won't be. Again, I'm not, I'm not here to make a to make a running list. We have affiliated LLC, tax, corporate, credit type people. 
we have we have affiliated in-house web design marketing and supplier stuff we, we do we have a lot of those upgrades that can come from our office directly or from trusted partners and affiliates and for those ones we'll always support it Th those are great additional services for sure and a lot of times when I'm asked, Trevor, do I have to get it? I'll say, no, of course you don't have to get some of these upgrades. But I'll outline I'll, or I'll outlay sort of the pros and cons. And in a perfect world where you guys have bigger budgets, I say, yeah, every one of them you should get. But at the same time, I know a lot of you guys are working on a limited budget, right? And so our, our stance on upgrades and additional services that, that cost extra money is, if you can afford it and you feel comfortable with it, absolutely. Get it. Use it. It'll it'll help you with your business. If 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 it you're not comfortable with it and it's going to put you in financial straits and you're going to be in big trouble, that's a different story, right? Then you should be a little more careful. The biggest question though is and this is really what I want to address tonight is while there may be upgrades and stuff that you can take advantage of, you know, there there are some companies that, you know, one, are trusted, or let's just say, let's just say trusted affiliates, and there are companies that I have no idea how they got your information. Okay. And 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 we've got to be able to distinguish between the two because I'm certainly not gonna I'm not gonna tell you to do something or work with a company that I don't know about or I've never heard of. That would be irresponsible of me just as a just as a coach. Right? So you know, let's 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 make sure that's clear because I know a lot of you guys who are here live with me, you're like, hey Trevor, I've gotten calls from companies that you guys don't even know who they are. How did they get my information? And that's where it gets tricky. So I guess let's let's address that first. Does anybody have any commentary on that? These companies that aren't affiliated with us, how do they find you? Right? You get a random call from somebody who wants to sell you some kind of marketing or some sort of web development. How do they get your contact information? These companies are good at it. They know how to they know how to find contact information for people who are getting involved in businesses. Yeah, there's there's a lot of ways. So one, Catherine, for sure. Um, if you let's if you register a domain name not private, okay. So there's a such thing as a private registration, and there's such thing as an open public registration. Usually a private registration on a domain name costs a little bit extra. But if you don't register it privately, your name is out there and you will get called by third-party marketing companies. I can absolutely guarantee it. That's something you got to be careful about. Uh, what if you register an LLC or a sole proprietorship, you know, a, a business license locally? You know, a lot of that is, is public record. Yeah, a lot of that's public record, and companies will find it, they'll find that you just registered a business. Now, what does that what does that tell you, right? Like, if if I'm a if I'm a, a sales company, and and you know I'm 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 looking for new businesses. I think a great place to find new businesses is to look in in some of those public records where people have just registered an LLC. Call them and find out what they're doing for their business and try to sell them. Right? That's that's essentially what they're doing. So sometimes your name just gets out there that way. How about what I showed you just a few minutes ago? Remember earlier when we talked about some of the things you may have signed up for online? How about this initial company? Sometimes you sign up online for things and that company gets shared. Sometimes you don't read the fine print in some, um, in some of their terms and conditions and they say that they can give your information out elsewhere and you agree to that. You may not have known that, but your information gets shared. So Shared information from original sign-up. You know, maybe we'll call it that. That's that. That's a possibility, right? In fact, I think that's the, that's one of the biggest ones right there. Because I'm telling you, I don't know how some of these companies get your information, but I think it has to do with number three, 
more than anything else. Your your information once you sign up for a few things just just gets shared. I mean, think about it. I remember. I don't know if you remember this. Think about the first time you set up like a legal business of some sort. Maybe you registered with the state or or you created a legal business name and maybe it was just a sole proprietorship, right? But do you recognize how all of a sudden you start getting random pieces of mail from printing companies or you know places like this to print trying to sell you uh, business cards and Right, like these these companies are looking for you because you're you're their target market. Uh, once you set up a website, then this is another one. Okay, if you create a, a website and have contact information on it, and some of you will put your phone number on it or put a direct email, you will get contacted. I can guarantee it. I, websites I've owned for years and years and years still get contacted by marketers all the time. And they'll say, hey, what, what are some of their tactics? You guys know, right? You, you guys have heard from some of these companies. Some of their tactics are like, hey, your website's not Google compliant. Or we're, we're recognizing some errors on your website. Even when there may not be any errors at all. They've got, to, they've got to find something wrong if they want to sell you something, right? You just have to be so careful about who to trust out there. Because let's be honest. I mean, there, there are a lot of dishonest people that will try to sell you things that are absolutely not necessary. So I suppose that's why they always say that you should have a mechanic that you can really trust, right? I think the majority of people don't know a whole lot about cars, I'll raise my hand and, and be the first to attest to that. Luckily, I have a, a mechanic that I, I trust, but I'm telling you, there, there was a time where I didn't. And I remember in college, I'll, I'll be brief, but I'll remember there was a time I, I can't even remember what got done. My car was not running well. So I, I'm in college. I don't know what I'm doing, right? I take it to the first mechanic that I can find. And they, they inspect it, and then they come back to me with this big, long, long list of things that are wrong, and all of a sudden I owe $750. And as you guys well know, to a college kid, that's a lot of money. And I, I just paid it, right, because I looked through that list, and my, my eyes glazed over, and I had no idea what I was paying for. I figured it was, it was important, so I, <laughs> so I just did it, right? These, sometimes these people prey on your ignorance. Now, I don't know if this guy – was actually being dishonest or not. The, my car could have had all of those problems. But if it didn't, I wouldn't have known it, and this guy would have gotten away with, um, with scamming me out of some money, right? So, so these companies out there, especially in internet marketing, they prey on a little bit of ignorance. You just have to be careful because they're going to look to convince you that something is wrong when, in fact, something may not be. And you know their other tactic that they like to use? They like to find out what kind of program you're in. Maybe they find out you're in the coaching program or they try to make it sound like they're part of the coaching program. Now, you got to remember, I've, I've been in this industry for the better part of 10 years. So I, I've, I've been doing this for a long time. I know my name's out there a little bit, right? I mean, that just happens when you're when you're in an industry for a while. And I do a lot of recordings and broadcasts and stuff. So I, I know my name's out there a little bit. Well, People will will say that they know me when they don't, right? They'll say, oh, yeah, I know Trevor, and I know what he does. I know all about your program when they don't. And so you gotta, you just got to be aware of that. So knowing that there are some companies, and, and I don't say any of this to scare you. I'm just trying to make you aware of what's out there. There, are, Like I said, there are these two types of, of companies. There are trusted affiliates, and they're ones that we don't know about. And I'm not saying every other company that's not affiliated with us is is not a great company. I mean, I'm not arrogant enough to say that. I think there's lots of good marketing companies out there. But my advice to you guys is if you ever get a call from somebody who you're not 100% sure of, even if they say they know about the coaching program and this is all just part of the, you already signed up for this, you get a, a consultation and and that's usually how they started. It doesn't sound like a sales call, right? It sounds like just a consultation. If that if it happens that way, before you move forward with them, 
can I just tell you t- tonight and make it very clear? I'd like you to simply just contact your coach first. Now, your coach is going to ask you when you say, hey, somebody called me and wanted to set up a meeting about marketing my website. The coach is going to say to you, who was it? What company were they with? So you need to be prepared to get that information. And sometimes when you ask one of these one of these sales companies, one of these unaffiliated third-party companies, what their company name is, they may give you something vague. Oh, we're from the marketing department. Oh, we're, we're from web development or... No, find out who their company actually is. Because guys, our our marketing department and web development department, they don't they don't they don't out make outbound calls. The only one making outbound calls for the most part from our company is is going to be your coach, unless they tell you otherwise, right? And and if it's going to be one of these third-party trusted affiliates, either your coach will give you a heads up about it, and if they don't, um, get the name of the company and you check back with your coach and we can confirm it, right? Because we have trusted affiliates that do LLC work and tax work and so on and so forth. So I think that should just be the standard for you guys. Knowing that for the most part, the only calls you're going to get are from your coach. And if they're not from your coach, it's from somebody affiliated or not. Find out the name of the company and check back with your coach. Now, the other thing that we've been implementing, which I feel like is extremely effective, And if you haven't implemented it with your coach, I'd like you to do this sooner rather than later. But we've been trying out this thing where we put a password on your account. So you and your coach or you and the coaching company decide on a verbal password that might, let's say for for this example, we assigned you the color yellow. That's your verbal password. So if it's somebody from the company that calls you, but it's not your coach, and you don't know if they're affiliated or they're really with the company, ask them what the verbal password is. If they can't give it to you, then they're probably not um, in our circle, right? And that actually has worked out really well. So I would encourage you guys, if you haven't already, set up a verbal password with your coach. He'll note it on your account. He or she will note it on your account. And then that'll be easy. Then anytime you get that, that unsolicited call, Say, hey, before we go any further, what's my password? And they'll say, well, it's yellow. It's here on your account. You'll know that they're with the company. Does that make sense? That actually is uh, is a pretty good way to, to approach it. Um, yes, and Russell, you read my mind. You just said the same thing. Use the password. It definitely works. Now, sometimes you guys will be contacted via email. Um, you'll get emails saying, hey, you know, this is the same thing. Whether it be a call or an email, you just got to be careful. Um, you get a lot of spam emails from different marketing companies and stuff. So just just be aware that uh, that, that you'll, you'll get solicited in a number of different ways, okay? But going back to my initial uh, drawing here, th- there are good affiliates and there are good extras. And if you can afford some of these and you and your coach think it's a good option, get it and use it. It'll help you with your company. We just don't want you to, to spend money where you don't have to spend money. And certainly, if you're not comfortable investing anymore when you get into the coaching program, guess what? You don't have to. So you can rest easily knowing that. Um, and, and if somebody ever makes you feel like you have to or they're being pushy or, or what have you, even if they're from one of our affiliates, please report that kind of behavior back to your coach because that's 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 not how we uh, that's not how we like to do business here. You know, we, I, I know we've got enrollment uh, enrollment consultants and and people that will put pressure on you to do different things and a, a little bit of pressure is good, right? I put pressure on you guys to do certain things, but there's a there's a line that can get crossed and you want to be we certainly want to be aware of that if that ever happens. But truth is, mostly that doesn't happen when it comes from one of our trusted people. It that that undo unprofessional pressure often comes from, you know, some of these untrusted, unsolicited third-party calls. Okay. So we just want you guys to be safe and to protect your information. And, you know, sad reality is we don't live in a totally honest world, but, you know, I guess that's why we have to have discussions like this to make sure we're all, we're all careful about that kind of thing. Okay. Great, Jim, go ahead and do that. I appreciate that.
Yeah, uh, Tina, I can. You want me to discuss marketing, specific types of marketing tactics in in in, uh, in detail? But like, what what are we talking about? Marketing tactics? What what these guys do to solicit you? Or are you talking about marketing tactics for the website? Marketing tactics that you would use to get traffic? Because that that'll be our. I mean, that's what this discussion is usually about most weeks. But we had to. We had to talk about something a little different tonight. Yeah, we probably won't have time as much tonight, but that that's what this webinar is dedicated to. We we talk about marketing almost every single week. Just with a with the occasional um detour, which is what happened tonight. Um okay. Before I lose my voice, let's let's finish up. Um thank you again for coming. I hope this was helpful. Especially to you guys that are newer and, and some of you guys that have been here for a while. I think I think you know that you know, you get some of these calls and you know how to handle it. Um, but for you guys who are newer, I hope this helps and just paints a, a little more of a clear picture about what to expect while you're with us in the program. Um, and, and we'll take it from there. And hopefully you guys have a wonderfully successful business as you work with us. Um, okay, well, we'll see you guys all next Thursday. Uh, thanks for putting up with my cold and my, my uh, congested voice here. I, uh, I Hopefully I sound better next week and we'll have a good session then, okay? Thanks for making a few minutes. We'll see you guys next time.